Hi Kiwis, here is Alexandra, and welcome to my next painting tutorial. Today we will paint again a space marine. And as you can see, I have uh, already primed him and attached his backpack. Here is his bolter. And, um, well, today we will paint a dark angel on several people's demand. But if you don't want to paint uh, a normal tactical marine, instead you want to paint a death wing terminator, then you should click right here <coughs> and that link will bring you to my painting tutorial about a Deathwing Terminator. But now let's see what we can achieve here. First thing uh, after the black spray primer, as you can see here, um, will be a first base coat out of green. Uh, for this instance I use this color here. This is a 50-50 mix out of Dark Angels Green and Orchide Shade, the foundation color. And with that uh, we will simply, with an old brush, <coughs> uh, cover the whole marine. Quite simple. Also the color is uh, watered down a little bit. And so this should be quite easy. So, like this. You can go over the areas uh, a few times <coughs> so that the coat is nice and even and very thin. And uh, with the help of the orchide shade you see the green is uh, covering quite well over the black primer. So I will finish that up and be right back. There we go. You see the marine is all in green now. Also I have painted the hands on the boulder in green and now it's time to start highlighting this nice fella here. And for that I use uh, pure Dark Angels Green and I will start highlighting this armor. And for that I use uh, my method of highlighting. Well, the GW version is uh, simply <coughs> using now uh, a mixture out of Snot Green and Scorpion Green and uh, Edge Highlight all the areas, but uh, actually I don't like Edge Highlighting Marines. I, thi I think uh, this looks uh, totally unnatural and I rather go for more natural highlighting. And for that instance, uh, well, I start highlighting the upper parts and uh, also leave a little bit of the old color behind so we can uh, see a nice transition between the, <coughs> the color variations. So for example here I paint this arm and uh, leave a little bit at this uh, edge there. Then also here leave a little bit. Then the shoulder pad I'll paint the upper part and leave down there a little bit behind. Make a kind of rough edge so you notice the uh, difference uh, much less when it is dry. Yeah, and so I go on <coughs> highlighting the armor in the first first step. So, I will uh, continue doing this and be right back. There we have it now. The first highlight is applied. And a second highlight I will use a mixture out of three parts Dark Angels Green and one part Snot Green. And it is also uh, quite watered down. And with that uh, I will start highlighting the upper parts now. Like here at the knee pad, I will uh, paint in a uh, quite circle, in a half circle uh, here at the knee pad. Also here. Then on the top part of the shoulder pad, like that. Then here. You must be a little bit uh, careful while highlighting, uh, well, <coughs> making the Dark Angel green brighter, because when you uh, put a brighter color in it, like Snot Green, um, this is uh, very easily quite too bright, so uh, 
be careful when you add the snot green so that you don't get too bright in the first wave. It's a pity that uh, Games Workshop doesn't uh, sell a middle variant between snot green and dark angel green. That would help a lot. But, well, if you want to, you can uh, create your own mix in an empty color pot. So, create your own color variation. Normally, when I paint a big amount of the uh, same color scheme and I have mixing colors in there, then, um, <coughs> well, I pre-mix my colors so I don't have to mix them over and over again because, well, each time you're mixing them, they're looking a little bit different and uh, when you pre-mix them, well, they will look always the same. That's the whole secret. And also here the secret for a nice blending is uh, watered down color <coughs> and rough edges. So And uh, also you can adjust the amount of paint you have on your brush by, uh, well, dabbing the brush itself on a paper towel. So, <coughs> but this is uh, something you have to learn over time. I get over and over messages like, uh, well, I don't find the right ratio between water and color, and I, uh, I don't get it done, so where's the secret? Well, the main secret is practice, believe it or not. Well, my art teacher uh, <coughs> always said to me, do it again, and then do it again, and, well, guess what? Do it again. That's the only secret for art in general, or <laughs> generally everything. If you're uh, playing, for example, an ego shooter like Battlefield or <clears throat> or uh, anything else, or Counter Strike, or how they are called, or Call of Duty, well, <laughs> you don't give up after the first two tries, don't you? If you're getting killed in this game, uh, you stood up and try it again, and then try it again, and over time you will get better. And also that is here uh, the case while painting miniatures. <coughs> over time you will get better at it. Just practice, 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 and even more practice. <coughs> so when I started painting, I had no one to teach me su such things, so I had to uh, come up with it on my own. Now, the next step uh, will be to highlight even more, and now I'll grab a little bit of that bright paint, you see, just a tip of the brush, and mix it in. <coughs> and also a little bit of water. See, that's the mixing ratio we are looking for. <coughs> so now we highlight even more. It's quite easy. Just take the highest parts and paint them with this color. Oh, and you, the further you go along with the highlighting, the less you have to paint. For example, right now I'm not painting everything. I'm just picking out the brightest spots. <coughs> and I try to avoid to make pools of this uh, wet color. I want to, uh, well, spread it over the area. That's the goal, to have a nice color transition. Otherwise, you have a harsh line. And you don't want to have that. Also, handling the brush and knowing how the bristles work, it's all, all uh, practice and knowing your tools. <coughs> you know, I usually uh, use a base coat brush. It's a, quite a big brush, and uh, 
well, several painters don't uh, get used to it to paint with such a big brush. It's just personal preference. If you uh, like to paint with smaller brushes, well, then go ahead. It's not in stone graved what tools I use. So just the tools I use don't make you a good painter. A good painter can use the tool he wants. Not the tool makes the painter. <clears throat> okay, I guess we are almost complete with highlighting this bad boy. <clears throat> well, we will take one further step. One small step for me, but a big step for this space marine. <laughs> secret to paint a dark angel. It's quite easy and uh, for example if you want to paint a, a salamander space marine then you simply uh, go two or three steps further into the snot green variant and uh, well then you have a, a salamander space marine. That's not that that hard to achieve isn't it? Well some of you might uh, want to have your dark angels even darker. Well I've shown you several times how to use your washes and uh, how to darken up surfaces. So, uh, well, you can use your butter black wash to darken the surface even more. <clears throat> and also, if you go over the same area like I do here at the, uh, at the leg parts, well, you can increase the highlight uh, status if you go uh, status if you go over it a second or a third or a fourth time because of the uh, thin color we are using. You're you're building up on the color. In this stage, the color is transparent. That means uh, it will always show the other color under it. So if you have a dark color, then the transparency will darken um, the the color itself. You know what I mean. <clears throat> so, and I guess, yeah, that's quite good for a dark angel. I'm quite pleased with it. <clears throat> and now I will go uh, for a little bit of the butter black wash if I can find it. I hope so. No. Well, be right back when I find the wash. Well, guess what? I'm kind of blind. The uh, butter black wash was directly in front of me, but I decided otherwise because I simply uh, need this step before. I will simply paint now all the metal parts. And for that, I use bolt gun metal. Quite easy. Just Paint the inside of the knees, for example. There's little moving parts of the armor. <coughs> then this little skull here. Well, the paint is a little bit too dry, so I add a bit of water. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's much better. So. Inside of the backpack vents. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. So then there's a little support of the feet. Yeah, that's good. There's not a <coughs> So then here the respirator, try not to hit the green parts, so change the angle if you go for the down parts, and there we go, the respirator is silver, 
Now here, this little part of the backpack. So there we go. Then also the respirator, the helmet here in front. This little parts. Yeah, have I forgotten something? No, I guess not. So then we go to the bolter. <coughs> the casing will be red, but here the clip will be silver. You, you get the point. I will be right back. Okay. While the silver parts are drying now, uh, it's time now for adding some red. Well, you know red don't cover very good and for that instance I normally use my uh, Macrite Red Black uh, mix. It looks like that. And well, this is a, a perfect color for priming uh, red areas. For example, like the eyes here. So just barely touching. So like that. Let's see. Then um, on a space marine like that, the dark angels have uh, their own uh, version to uh, indicate on which uh, company they are in, and uh, we will make him from the third company. And uh, this <coughs> is just a, a red stripe on the knee pad so like that see <coughs> so our next red parts are the bolter casings also I will prime it now with this color and I'll be right back when this is done Okay, the boulder case is now also red, and now comes the last and final uh, step before applying some washes. <coughs> so, we have here the chest eagle. Normally, uh, well, there are two ways for the chest eagle to be depicted at. In the uh, codex, there's a picture of a dark angel, a schematic picture, and there's the sh chest eagle in silver. But all the miniatures uh, that are displayed in the book have the chest eagle in, um, well, in a bone color. And, well, I go for the bone color now. And for that, uh, I simply prime it now with a denim stone, the foundation color. And you see it covers quite well over the chest eagle, over the green. Also a very easy step. <coughs> Just like that. So, I will uh, let this dry and also I will, when I'm right here, paint this little purity seal and denim stone. Well, like I said, I will uh, let that dry now. Oh, damn it, mistake. You need to be fast, clean up the brush, and try to fix it while it is wet. And wipe it off with a wet brush. <coughs> yeah, and they have seen how to fix mistakes, painting mistakes. You need to be fast. Before it dries. Well, all good things are three, so I will let that dry now and be right back. So, okay, now it is dry and uh, we can start to apply some washes. <coughs> and we will start with the chest eager with applying some Griffon Sepia wash. And no, I don't create my own washes. You can buy them pre mixed from uh, almost every painting um, paints producing company like Games Workshop or 
Valeo or Private Press or how they are all called. So, for example, a GW wash pot looks like that. <coughs> for those of you that didn't know. So, now we have the Eagle washed. And now it's time for some uh, butter black wash. Also straight out of the pot. I'm not diluting this in any way. <clears throat> First, we are taking, we will take the silver parts like here and there. And what this wash will do is, it will uh, run into all the cracks and crevices and pull there. And well, <clears throat> this black pooled wash areas, well, they are our shadows and give our miniature better three-dimensional look. Also, we will uh, use this black wash to <coughs> even increase the three-dimensionality of the green armor. So, because we will use it here and there to increase the shadows. For example, here down at the feet, Uh, we will use it uh, everywhere <coughs> where shadows would appear, like for example here in this arm socket, in this little corner, or here underneath the helmet. Okay, then here, uh, this area for example, this is covered by the bolter and will be quite dark, and so we will darken this up. <coughs> so then here this little cracks here in the armor. Also there. Then down here at the feet. So don't you see I'm uh, painting over the edge. <coughs> well, I cleaned it up with now a clean brush stroke and everything's fine. See? It's quite easy. But you must be fast before it dries. Well, when it will dry at this position it will uh, leave a black lined marking and that's not what we want. So also the parchment here we will Give a wash with Griffon Sepia. <coughs> so then, maybe here under the shoulder pad. Also cleaning here the edge. Ta da! Then here, this little part. There. Yeah, and I guess <coughs> that's enough for three dimensional making on this marine. Now we'll go ahead with a boater, and with that, I simply go over it. Cover the red areas also, like the metal areas. <coughs> and give it a nice dark red texture. Also beneath the fingers. So, <coughs> now this is time, this is the time to let it dry. But I guess I will go over the chest eagle again a second time to increase the appearance of this brown. Yeah, I guess that's okay. And I will lay the marine almost flat down 
<clears throat> because uh, if I would let it dry upside down, all will run down. That's not what we want. We want him to be in this position. So, be right back when he is dry. Okay, the wash is dry, and also I have attached already the bolter here. <clears throat> and it's late in the evening, and that's the perfect time to make the base. So, for that, I simply use a little bit of white glue with an old brush, and I will apply it to the base, just like that. And after that, I will pull it through some sand. So I get quite often the question what kind of sand I'm using. Well, this is a mixture out of a little bit of sand from a playground, children's playground, and uh, uh, the GW sand, and also uh, some here uh, yeah, this uh, brown gravel from a, a dollar store for decoration purposes. But uh, that's the perfect stuff. Or bases and also some uh, birdcage sand is in there so for the finer textures and this mix is absolutely perfect after pulling it through the sand go uh, with a finger along the line and et voila, you have sand on the base like that and I'm doing this uh, in the evening because well overnight it can dry and I'll be back when the night is over the good thing about insomnia is that you can simply then go on with painting. <laughs> well, the base now is dry, and what I will do now is give it a wash with Devlin mud. So, just simply take an old big brush and give it a quite heavy wash, like this here. <coughs> yes, I know there are quite several um, stages where you have to wait until it is dry. Well, basically, normally uh, you paint up uh, between 5 and 10 models uh, each at the, at the same time. And, uh, well, while you uh, are painting the second and third and fourth and fifth one, <laughs> the first one is still drying and when you're finished uh, normally <coughs> the first one is dry when you reach the last one. So now this is uh, painted and wet and uh, while this is wet I will uh, quickly paint up this uh, little bag in Kaltan Brown. So <coughs> also just simply take the paint on the brush and quickly paint this area. Nothing too hard about that. Just simply paint on and listen the rain outside falling. Well, you probably might not hear it, but I hear this constant rain sound in the background. But if you don't have cult and brown, you can also paint them these little bags in bestial brown or snake bite leather or whatever paint you want. So the paints I am telling you in my painting tutorials are not graved in stone. <coughs> so if you don't like um, a color, then just exchange it. There's nothing too hard about it. I simply want to give you the technique how to paint it, not a uh, uh, well painting by numbers. <coughs> so yeah, that's the little bags, and he's almost done. <coughs> Only minor little highlights, like the red, for example, we can highlight now. Uh, and for that, I simply use blood red. You can find it. Yeah, that's the one. And don't forget to wash out your brushes properly. 
So, and when you have a problem with my coffin, and, and think that I am not a girl because I coffin so much, no. This is the problem. I'm smoking a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, kids, smoking is not good. Then you get a voice like me, and you're coughing all the time. So, don't smoke. <clears throat> but other than that, simply paint now the border case or this little strip on the knee in blood red. So, and also leave a little bit of the dark red behind so you get a shadow. Quite easy. <coughs> Just like that. Okay, now I will also highlight the eyes, and for that I paint the two third of the eye in the front in blood red. Yeah, that looks nice. And what I will do now <coughs> is highlight even more. And for that I mix in uh, some blazing orange into the blood red. Just mix it in. And maybe a little bit of water. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. And then highlight again. more water yeah that's better okay dokey so then this red stripe here For the eyes, <coughs> I will take pure blazing orange and with that I paint the front part of the eye. side <clears throat> they have nice red glowing eyes so we will increase this look now even more and for that we need scar white <clears throat> that we have here Tiny little dot in the back corner of the eye. Like that. See? And the same on the other side. Don't make this dot too big. But with that, you have a nice three-dimensional lens. So now I will take also some of the Devlin mud to give now the little leather bags here a little bit more depth. Just go over it. 
the wash and make it pool in the corners see <coughs> yeah and that's basically it uh, what's left to do is um, add transfer sheets to the shoulders and for that I will use the quite normal Space Marine transfer sheet there we have uh, here this tactical arrow <coughs> then the uh, chapter symbol with a dark angel symbol here and uh, also on this tactical symbol I will take one of those numbers uh, to indicate the squad marking well the uh, first six numbers are for uh, tactical squads uh, in the Dark Angel uh, army then uh, number seven and eight are for assault uh, marines and um, number nine and ten squad number nine and ten are the devastators so here you have assault and devastator but this will be tactical marine with this here and over that also a number for the <coughs> number of the squad and that will indicate that this marine here will be um, a marine of the third company uh, of the second squad so that you can determine what squad marking he has uh, I will do this uh, off camera but um, I will highly recommend uh, this stuff here this is microsaw this is a um, uh, decal softener <coughs> and that uh, will help to well place the decals and uh, get rid of the warping and also another tip you see this glare around your uh, transfer when you cut the transfer out cut it as close as possible to the actual transfer that will uh, help to reduce the warping of the transfer sheet itself so, and uh, we see us back when I will make the base. Okay, so he looks now with attached transfer sheets. And now it's the time to finish up this marine. <coughs> we will paint the base. And for that, uh, well, I will dry brush now the sand with... Kardashian <coughs> green and after that I will quickly go over that again with uh, some Gretchen green <coughs> very quickly use one of my uh, homemade grass tufts with some white glue so if you uh, want to know how to create this just click on the screen and a new window should open that shows you how to create those grass tufts so I will take one Add a little bit of white glue and simply attach it to the base. Just like that. And ta-da! We have a nice grass tuft. Yeah, that looks good. <coughs> so, and after that, final touch-ups with some bestial brown around the base okay as you can see it covers not 100 percent 
but that's okay. Uh, after this is dry, I will simply go over it a second time and then it will perfectly cover. So, <coughs> oh, uh, here the parchment. Um, I will, I think I will leave it like that, but I will add some inscription on it. And for that, I will use uh, just here this uh, adding 1800. I hope he writes right now. Yes, he does. So, and simply add a little bit of inscription work. And ta da! He is done. The finished Dark Angel Space Marine. I hope you liked this tutorial, and we see us in the next video. Alexandra.